Thought we'd give a little lesson today on scrub brushes for your scrubber. So we're going to start out with the disc scrub brushes and I'm going to take you through the different types available and what you might use them for. So we're going to start with the pad driver. The pad driver is probably the most versatile tool you can put on a disc floor scrubber because we can change the pads out uh, for different types of floor surfaces. Basically we've got a, a abrasive pad that mounts on here. It's just clipped in place with some type of holder like this. And uh, there are hundreds of different pads you can get for any floor scrubber. I'm going to show you a few of them. As I mentioned earlier, there's about a hundred different pads you can get for the bottom of a floor scrubber. Uh, some of the most common I have in my hand right now. A white pad is about the softest pad you can get. Uh, this would be for cleaning uh, a floor that has wax on it or some type of uh, high gloss surface that we don't want to scratch up at all. Uh, a medium duty pad would be a red pad uh, and this is just a general purpose cleaning pad. Again, this typically won't scuff up a floor as long as you don't run it in one place for too long. One of the more aggressive pads we can get is a black pad. And what we use black pads for is stripping. Uh, these are designed along with chemical to be able to strip wax off of a vinyl tile floor. It also works great on a concrete floor if we're trying to get off some type of really tough stain on the floor or buildup. Uh, it's one of the most aggressive surfaces uh, you can get on a pad. Pads are two-sided, so when we wear off the abrasive on one side, we can flip it over on the pad driver and use the other side. Um, there's so many different things you can do with pads. They make pads that have uh, animal hair in them that are designed for polishing, like a hog's hair pad. They have pads that are designed for burnishing to bring the gloss up. Uh, even pads with diamonds impregnated into them for polishing concrete. So a lot of things you can do with a pad driver. Probably if you're not sure which way to go, the best thing you can do is give us a call at 800-793-3790 and we can help you out choosing the correct pad for your machine. This is a white nylon brush. This is probably the softest of the bristle brushes available. There's one, one or two that are slightly softer but not commonly used. This is the most common soft brush you can buy. Uh, the reason we'd use a soft brush rather than a pad holder would be in a case where we have a glossy floor like this where we don't want any abrasive material on it, but maybe that floor has some slip resistance in it or grit on it. The problem with that is when we run a pad over that surface, it tends to shred the pad, so a brush works much better. Also, a lot of floor surfaces are uneven the floor surface is uneven, a pad will tend to skip over the low spots where the brush has a better chance of getting down into the low spots and cleaning. What I like about a soft brush versus a pad is we don't have to change them as often. Problem with pads sometimes is operators forget they're underneath the machine, they don't change them, the pad wears away, and eventually the pad driver is getting into the floor surface and scratching it up. Brush lasts much longer. You can get over a hundred hours out of a brush a lot of times and operator doesn't have to worry about changing it. This is a black poly brush so this is the next step up from the soft white nylon. Black poly again we're using on a surface where we don't want any grit or abrasive marring the surface. In a case where the floor is dirtier or there's ground in dirt we need to be a little more aggressive than the white nylon we go up to poly. Poly is also the least expensive brush you can buy. So commonly, you, you see these used out in the marketplace. They kind of come as standard equipment on a lot of machines. They last a long time. They're inexpensive. It's a good all-around brush. This is what I call a light grit brush. So we've got the same type of poly fiber as the brush that I showed you earlier, but the, the fiber has silicon carbide grit impregnated into it. Now there's different size grits that you can get. This is one of the lighter grits, so think of it as a fine sandpaper almost in the bristle. My opinion, on most surfaces, this is the most aggressive cleaning brush you're going to get. Um, we spin this brush because the grit is small. We have a lot of contact area, and it just does a great job of, of taking off stubborn buildup on a floor, uh, stains, things like that. Um, most cases, this will be the best brush for cleaning ability. 
I have to caution you though, if your floor surface has a gloss to it and you wanna keep that gloss on the floor, don't use this brush because it'll be like sanding it down with a light grade sandpaper. So this is what I call a heavy grit brush. Uh, you'll also see them called nylo grit out there. Uh, Tenant calls them an AB brush. AB stands for abrasive bristle. So what we've got here is a thicker polyfiber with heavy silicon carbide grit impregnated into it. You can hear when I run my hand across of it how, how aggressive it is. This brush is used when we've got heavy dirt and buildup on a floor and we want to rip through it with the floor scrubber. Uh, this type of brush, you know, it will mar the surface just like the light grit brush over there. But if, if you've got a, an eighth of an inch of buildup on the floor or something like that, this is the kind of brush you would need. Typically, when we're restoring an older floor that hasn't been cleaned in a long time, we'll use brushes like this and then we'll graduate to a light grit or even a poly after the floor gets clean. Um, this and the light grit are the two most expensive brushes you can buy. But when you figure the labor savings because of the way they clean quickly through the dirt and buildup, uh, they're worth it. Get the floor clean and then keep it clean with a poly or a nylon brush. I want to talk to you a little bit about rotating brushes. I grabbed a brush here that's about half wore out uh, just to show you what happens to them. If you take a look closely here, you'll see the bristles have started to bend over in this direction. Most scrubbers have an even number of brushes underneath, uh, typically two. So one brush is turned in one direction, the other brush is turned in the other direction. What's gonna happen over time and quickly, usually within uh, a couple hours of use, is the bristles start to lay over, just like a push broom does when you use it in the same direction too long. And then what happens is, because those bristles are laid over, it becomes very smooth. So you see when I run my hand over it, those bristles are now very smooth. If I was to reverse the brush and go the other direction, watch what happens. So it's about four times more aggressive after I reverse the brushes. So what we've gotta do is we've gotta encourage our operators at least once a week, take these brushes off and switch them one side to the other. Two things are gonna happen. Number one, it's gonna clean a heck of a lot better. And number two, the brushes are gonna last a heck of a lot longer. Both things save you money. So we gotta get your operators to do that. Factory cleaning equipment's been in the scrubber business for 20 years now. We have a lot of people on staff that know a heck of a lot about floor scrubbers and have seen a lot of applications out there over the years. Please give us a call if you're not sure which brush to order. We'd love to help you on the telephone. Our telephone number is 800-793-3790. Thanks for watching. <laughs>